Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. I'm hanging out with Kerry King, KFK. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for taking the time. And we're sitting right next to your guitar boat, who is being watched by uh, Kenny Stabler. So if you care, obviously you got BC Riches, but care to talk to us about any individual models that you're using? Um, it's it's strangely empty. There's usually ten in here, but we're doing the old school set, and it's all the same tuning. So I don't even need this many. Um, Just backups. Yeah, the, the Warlock there, the Flame Top, this is the one that only gets played when we play Drop B songs. Okay. So what this one, this one's, this one's just here for nothing right now. Um, but the last time we played, the last time we went out and I used it, we'd be playing Payback or um, Americon sometimes. Just anything with a Drop B tuning, this is a guitar I use. But he's pretty much on vacation right now. Yeah, we're only using three guitars right now. This one, well, this is the original tribal design that I had BC Rich do like 98, 99, 2000, something around there. I've been playing tribal guitars a long time. But this is the original design. This one we use for pretty much strictly for clean songs and whatever's attached to it. So like today we play Seasons and we'll go into something else and then I'll switch it out and I'll, I'll always pick it up before I play the clean song because, you know, if I'm beating a guitar up too much before that, that might be out of tune and you definitely hear it when you play <laughs> clean. clean. Yeah, yeah. so hide. this one's definitely designated to clean and whatever goes with it. Do you put a specific, or based on what pickups are in there, is that why you go with that one? That one, no, one? that one's just not as aggro as my other ones. Okay. So when we do kick in the clean, it's not over distorted. Oh, gotcha. This is one of my full-blown mains. It's kind of the one that goes with that Warlock. The Warlock's B, this one's, you know, uh, D sharp, half step down. What do you prefer? I know that you've been using the Kaler. What do you prefer about that versus the Floyd Rose? I learned on it. Okay. And realistically, that's the difference. Yeah. You learn on one or you learn on the other. Because Kaler's set up, so for instance, they sit up like this to where Floyd's essentially flat. Mm -hmm. So when you're chugging and trying to get uh, muffled notes, it's completely different technique on a Floyd to a Kaler. So you, you don't usually have both. You're either one or the other. Yeah. <coughs> and I learned on a Kaler, so... That's what I have. How you use the tremolo versus other guys, one thing I really appreciate about your playing is the way you use it almost subtly versus just dive bombing all the way. Like the World Painting Blood is a perfect song where you use that and it's, it's not overdone. I just wanted to get your take on how you like to use that. Well, it's very easy to get married to the trim, you know. Um, don't want to make up a solo? Go fucking land on that trim. You got a solo, you know. <laughs> um, but I... In my older years, when I, you know, started thinking about what I was doing, I'll save the trem leads for, like, maybe the last 20% of my leads. You know, and it'll turn up in some of the other leads, but, you know, as an accent rather than mm -hmm. the star of the show. Um, but if I, if, I, if I start making them up, I mean, like I said, they'll, it'll show up, but I'll base, like, 20% of my leads, ones towards the end that I really have no idea what I want to do, then they become tremolo leads, and, <laughs> and they just take on life of their own. Um, but yeah, there's so many things you can do with it, you know. I, I'd probably pull up more than I pull down. Yeah. yeah, I assume most of these, if not all of them, have your signature EMGs in there? Yeah, and this one's got the sustainer in it as well. Which I use for like the intro, Dead Skin Mask. If I wanted to just feed back and not look for it, just <laughs> kick on the sustainer, and I could be on Gary's side and I'll feed back, you know? Yeah. Um, just a good little gadget to have for me. Is there anything particular that you ask from them or that you change once you get them? Or are these pretty, you know, people could buy these and that'd be the same one that you're playing? You can buy them, but the handmade American ones are stupid money. Yeah. This is the other main. This one's pretty old, too. I think this is one of the earliest ones I did the second generation, what I call second generation travel graphics on. Same fretboard, but different body. And it's, you can tell I wear real chains because that's what fucked my guitar up. <laughs> I love it when I read, I love it when I read the Carrie Wears Plastic Chains. I'm like, motherfucker, those are heavy. And my guitars suffer, and my guitars get battle wounds from it. But this is my other main um, half-step down guitar, which I pretty much go back and forth between this one and the fire one on this run. Obviously, you're a shredder and you, you play so fast and so articulate. Is there a guitar that you pick for songs 
based on knowing that that song or that solo, you, you, you want to be comfortable, you want to be able to play yeah, it? Yeah, I base my set on what guitar sounds better, like like between the fire one and the black beast, we call it, the black second gen tribal. Um, the fire's got more life to it, to where on any given stage, the black beast may or may not sound as good. This stage here at the Aragon sounds great. Um, some of the ones that, I don't know what they're, they call it, but to me it seems like a compressed plastic, which a lot of the stages are made up of these days. That guitar hates it, and my rig hates it. Doesn't like it, it just over distorts it. it just, it reacts with my sound in a detrimental way, you know, and I, I really don't like those stages, but you gotta play on where they put you. Yeah. And uh, guitar strings, are you using anything different f throughout the various, um, I guess, models or Tunings. All my, all my D sharp tuning is nine to forty two. My C sharp is ten to forty six. In my B, I, it's a fifty two or fifty six. Fifty six for the B. This is one of my newer ones, but it's not in the set right now. When you're looking to, you know, update a model or add different things to it, what are what are some things that you're always looking to um, improve upon? I'm just basically doing a new paint job, a new a new look, essentially because I like the guitars. Um, you know, they're all ebony fretboards. They all have the tribal inlays. I do have a new one that's not out here because my BC Rich guy flaked and didn't come to the show. Um, and it's a new model they want me to be pimping, you know. Yeah. And I, I would open the show with it, but he didn't come to the LA show, and I just haven't had him send it out, which I should. Um, that one's a Beast V, and it's got a camo paint job. Oh, okay. But it's a camo that we designed at BC Rich. It's red, black, gunmetal, gray, and gray. So it's different, you know. It's really cool, but... Yeah, they're all the same, like I said. Same pickup, same Kaler. They're all solid maple. They all got volume, tones. Well, this one has two tones. This one's weird. Um, preamp, which I don't use as much anymore. Um, pickup selector. And the ones that have the, the sustainer up here, they got the switches right here. Is the preamp just like an onboard, like a boost? Yep. And why I stopped using it is because I got an overdrive out there now. In those preamps, they add a they add a, a depth to it, you know, like a like a bassy depth, which I would. That's why I started playing Crybaby because it would. I would always turn it on because it gave me the boost I wanted, but it was too muddy, so I'd play wah on everything. Now I just play wah on everything without the the bassy boost. Obviously, the twenty two oh three. Is there anything? I know that you based it off of what you liked in your JCM eight hundred. Did you do anything different to the eight hundreds that you were playing yeah. before that? Yeah, I did. Um, like. The one that this is based on, it's called the Beast, um, and I had it. I had it. Yeah, it is now. I had it sent to Marshall to find out what was so great about it. You know, see if anybody modded it over the years before I got it. And the reason that head was so good, like Marshall has parameters that every transistor, everything has to be within this range. My my entire head, everything was straight up, like it was the perfect head. You know, it's how it was supposed to be, and they don't all come out like that. Yeah. But that was the perfect one, and they based this off of that. Yeah, it's got the beast button, which engages the assault mode. It's got the assault mode's got a built-in gate because it is. It's basically taking my 10-band equalizer with a decibel boost and put it in the head. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have, still you don't use that. And you can't you can't change the parameter, but it's the parameter that I always had set. Um, and you can add more of it or less of it. It's really cool. I mean, I could, I could go anywhere in the world, and if this rig didn't show up, I don't care. I'll play through a cable if I have to. But if I have one of those heads, yeah. you wouldn't notice. A, you wouldn't notice any difference in my sound because it sounds. I go directly into that. Besides all this garbage. You were saying we're with Jason on the way here. We're listening to Stone Cold uh, podcast, and you're saying how there's a unique way that you set up your three amps in terms of sending through the, the yeah. cabs. You don't you use it to get almost like a wash or a wish wash sound that you're saying absolutely can you explain that to everyone at home how you're wired i don't out? if i'm running three heads and i got six cabinets i don't want one head running these two one head running these two and one head running these two because then you got three distinctly different sounds as you walk across them yeah. and you'll notice so the way i set them up if i got six cabinets one head goes to cabinet one and four another one goes to two and five another one goes to three and six so you just get a big wash of the entire sound. You don't stand in front of one and hit a spot on stage you don't like. Yeah. You know, it's it's really cool. I don't think a lot of people do that, but I just did it naturally because it seemed right to me. Is there anything that you do differently towards the three amps? Are they set up pretty identical? Uh, They're pretty close, but I mean, everyone's different. Yeah. You know, and my bottom one always sounds best. I don't know why. Like there's two we swap in and out of there, and it just blasts on the other ones. <laughs> For most nights, assuming a venue as big as the Aragon, 
that you're you're running all three mm-hmm. all the time. Okay. The cabs are you using the speakers. Do you? you They're just stan- uh, standard mode four. Okay. And I forget what's in them because I'm a dick like that. <laughs> Why do you prefer the mode fours? I know those aren't. The new- mode fours sound really good with my signature head. Okay. Um, they sound good with a 1960s, but mode four just because there's that there's more wood in there and the speakers react different to it. Okay. It just makes it makes it it makes it sound like you're tuned lower. It just gives it more fullness, I guess. You go with what you're th- saying while you're going with the different setup. Is that why you're having them all stacked down rather than having them, you know, on top of each other? Too. I don't two? like, like even when we had three cabinets high, I never have sound coming out of those. I like, I don't, because it blasts you in the head. You know, <laughs> yeah. when it's when it's coming from here, it's just a comfortable, warm, loud. You know, and it, it's not a painful loud because if it was like that, I'd have a lot more trouble hearing. Yeah. But um, yeah. Even when I had three high, there were always just bottom cabinets. Okay. So when I run clean, we A-B it, and all this goes away. Then we just go straight, straight through direct. the monitor board. And sure wireless run um, units. Not too anal about having cables. You, do, you, you prefer the freedom of going on stage? And Absolutely. Kind of, yeah. But I'm not above a cable. You know, like, if this shit ain't working, give me a cable because I want to be heard. You know, I want the kids to hear. Yeah. yeah we got the rack wah, which I have out there as a backup at the moment. I'm, using, I'm running a Zach Wild wah. Why do you prefer that versus the crybaby? It's nastier. Okay. But the cool thing about this rack Y is you can have, I don't even know, how many pedals can you run into that? Uh, that one's six, I think. You can run six pedals into that <laughs> and just have pedals like, like Kirk Hammett does when yeah. he's playing. He's got wahs all over the place because he's running one of these. But I, I only do that in one song, which we're not playing right now. I'll have a wah set up on Gary's side so we can double lead over there. But it's, it's versatile. You can have a million sounds coming out of it. There's presets. There's dials. You can dial in the way you want each preset. So that's a really cool piece. It's just a Zach Wild one. It's nasty. You know, it's just nasty all the time, and I'm in a real nasty mode right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for guitar picks, I know that you use Dunlops, but uh, particular um, gauge thickness? Medium. Yep. Is that something you've just always been using? Always comfort- medium, yep. Yep, I just got the new ones. Yeah, it's just a celluloid. Which shreds pretty quickly, but you know it's what you're used to. Are you? I'm sure during the show you're rotating it just because it looks like it's an all. You can That's use why all I like three that angles. pick. Yep. Yeah. People people freak out that I use this big a pick. I think it's like a bass pick, but essentially this is a six sided pick, and I could, as long as I don't drop it, I can <laughs> I can flip from chord to chord. You yeah. know, if I, if I got a spot that's that's hitching me up. You know, and it's catching, it's making the fluidity not be that awesome. You can flip it that way, and you got three more. It's just completely versatile for me shredding picks like I do. All right, well, Kerry, thank you very much for the time. Pretty Appreciate good. it, man. Cool. Right, we're over here with Tom. Tom, how are you doing? Doing all right. How you doing? Good. As you said previously, your rig is very simple, so it shouldn't oh, take very long. Yeah, it's basic. It's a very basic. basic. Yeah, I don't really know too much about my rig. My brother knows it. He does everything for me. There you go. I just tell him I like the sound, and then he does it. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, then he, create, he puts the sound together for me. But yeah, I just use Marshall stock heads. There's nothing really special about them. What do you hear that you like about that? Bright, the brightness, brightness and punch, you know. And this wasn't what I, you know, I didn't use Marshall all the time. Uh, they made some cabinets for me, to, to, you know, better than the cabinets I had, mm-hmm. and it sounded great. And then the guys, you know, we asked them if they would send me some heads, and they sent me the heads, and my brother dialed in the tones that I like, and, and this is what I got. And all I got is a compressor, right? Is that running all the time or just most of the time? It's, it's on all the time. It's on all, yeah. I like, I like a punchy, you know, like a piano sound where it's like a dong, dong, really, really punchy sound. And then, you know, I, uh, Here's, that's it. And then I use my ESPs. These are the uh, signature bases. And I have the EMGs and, yeah, this is the humbucker. And I have one that's, uh, they're both single, that, those, that one's a single coil, both single coil. Is there any particular songs you're using for the humbucker one versus the single coil models? No, it's, it's about sound. Sound and then today he made me he try out. He, go, he, he told me to try this one out because uh, this is the main bass that I use. I don't really switch bases, okay. you know. And if uh, if he notices it's out of tune or if I notice it, but I don't really. I use one bass when I start, and that's the same yeah. one I use the whole time. Is there uh, anything that you've asked ESP to do since with your neck surgery and your back that to lighten it or have different straps so they, it's easier? They've attempted to make them lighter. But my, my my brother came up with a, 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 a what do you call those support? Like a weight belt, yeah. A weight belt, and he and he and he snapped a, a center a center button. It was on this one, huh? Yeah, it was on all of them. It was on all of them. That's that, oh, 
this is oh, where yeah. the whole this is where the hole was for it. <laughs> and I would and then I had a, a, a one um what do you use the shalars? It was a shaler. Uh, yeah. Uh, I had, anymore, yeah, I had these on here. And then I just click it. So I could, gone. so it was like a ZC top I could spit in if I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he came up with it and uh, managed to uh, get a company to put that together for me. And I used it for one tour. It was after the surgery. Then after that, I stopped using it. So and they attempted to make them lighter, but like I don't like them. I, I, you know, they just sound better when they're when they're solid and not hollow. And uh, for strings, what strings are you guys using? We're using the Dunlop. Uh stainless steel and they're the uh, 50 through 110 gauge it wasn't lying folks it was no very custom, simple yeah no custom gauges or nothing just yeah i like to use stock because that one when somebody says what do you use and i said well i use this and you can go to the store and buy it and it's, it's the same with this when i when they were making these for me when they first approached me about that i said listen i go i know you can make me a custom base that's great but you know if someone wants to buy the base i'm using i want them to be able to just go there grab it off the rack and you know and these are these are they make these and then they make the ltds very, very similar to these and i use those i use you know i'll use the ltd sometimes but they're the ones that you get right off the rack and i, I don't you know what i mean i don't want anything yeah. special it costs too much money to get something specially made and you can i can go anywhere and get one made you have to call your brother if they want to get the harness put on <laughs> <laughs> no he came up with that and you know he goes what do you think i'm like oh this is really cool like we should patent it <laughs> it was good for the year. We yeah. did, I did it for a year, and then, and it, you know, it's a perfect idea. Yeah, it yeah, but it's you know pretty basic. And like I said, Marshall approached me, and they asked if they would, you know, hey, let's we want to do something for you. It's the same with ESP. They approached me and say, hey, we want to do something for you. I'm like I wish those guys would approach me. Yeah, I said I'm out in a band and sing. Yeah, no, it's just it's just really cool. You know, I mean, I don't, I keep it basic and simple. I don't, I don't need all that other. All right, well, Tom, thank Where you very much. The garbage. <laughs> it's just about playing, man. Yeah, it's about playing. Man. All right. Tom, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right, I'm over here with Gary. Gary, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Not too bad. See here, you got your signature Schecter. Do you care to tell us about it? This is the one, This is the blood splatter. They built this one for me for the Indio Big Four show. And uh, actually, uh, this exact design, they actually scanned the guitar and got it exactly right. It's going to be next year's signature model. Only addition, well, I'm having Zodiac Killer inlays in it, which I don't know why. I just like the <laughs> Zodiac Killer. But everybody's always like, every time I do a different graphic, they're always asking for when, when they'll get their hands on the blood splatter. You know, this one's kind of come my most identifiable Slayer guitar, I guess you'd say. You know, I open with it every day, so. Maybe people have seen it this winter at NAM, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it should be ready. They're working on it now, you know. It's like, you know, and, uh, I think we're still keeping the goat head inlay. Actually, I need to ask Mark about that because I do want to keep it. I hope he doesn't think I wanted to, like, lose that because it's nice to satanic, you know. So <laughs> I love that. the blood, bl yeah, uh, exactly. blood spider. And that was actually designed by my tattoo artist, Bob Tyrell. You know, I said, can you do me up a simple goat head that's easy that they can make work as an inlay and that's what he came up with you know so goat head pentagram Perfect. is there uh anything different with uh, i guess electronics or pickups on this one or is it everything else the same as your normal models 89 you know it's like I, in slayer i don't ever use a single coil but yeah. you know and like all the other ones like uh all have like uh my red emgs which emg made just for like my signature same thing you know just uh but that one we went with the white because it looked better with the blood splatter you know keep kept the the theme going this one we called domino because he looks like a pizza the red came out kind of like looks like a good marinara sauce <laughs> but this one sounds awesome though i love it and and i got a couple some others over there you know like uh is there any one that you particularly use with slayer the most the blood splatter and and uh, this is the one, the tribute I made that I only played during the last two songs. I didn't make it, they made it for me, but they did a magnificent job. Because, you know, with the Flying V trying to fit, uh, you know, the new version of Jeff's uh, Heineken logo on a V was impossible, you know, because, you know, he had it on a strat, so he had the round area. So we combined the two and did this kind of almost like a watermark and did the, uh, you, you're born in 
Yuri Pass on the headstock. So this one's a special guitar, you know. Is this something that maybe Schechter will release? Oh, never, never. It's just for you. Never. This is mine, you know. Slayer thing, you know. Ever stops. This is, just gets hung up on the wall at home, you know. This one's not for sale to anybody in any shape. And there probably would never be a second one. I just wanted it for those last two songs, for South of Heaven and Angel of Death, you know. So yeah, it's awesome. Do you ever get a chance to play um, any of Carrie's V's to just to feel the different, you know, the differences between well, his you know, V's? He's a Kaler guy, and I've been playing Floyd Roses my whole life, and and you know, I, I even track rhythms on uh, this one here is like a one-off graphic. This one came out really main sweet. C. Yeah, this is my main C guitar. This is the Lex Talionis V. I got two of these, one with Exodus in here. But yeah, Carrie's a, a Kaler guy, you know, and my, my hand just is born to play on a Floyd Rose. Even when I, when I track rhythms, you know, I use a you know, Floyd guitar because, you know, fixed bridge just doesn't feel natural to me. You know, it's other guys who aren't Floyd dudes will pick it up and it's, you know, they're like pushing it down up, you know, whatever, you know, it's just kind of just, it's my curse. <laughs> not uh, not as much marinara going on this one. No, no, this one's got a lot of nice color in it. I really love Action this one, yeah. It. Yeah, it's killer. Yeah. Got the crucifixion nails on the headstock, which is always oh, good. Evil. Yeah, yeah, that one's killer. And then we have the white fingernail polish added to make my blind ass be able to see the <laughs> the um, the dots, you know, which is partly my fault because I've always gone with no inlays. And as I get older and more blind, you know, I can't. <laughs> can't see what the hell I'm doing anymore you know this one's tuned to B this one I like a lot too but we're not doing any B stuff this just you know it's like my original signature which was just black but done in a matte black so looks really good though with the red binding and stuff so I think about taking this one home <laughs> play with it a little while I never get to see it that often <laughs> for Slayer I'm using on the main tuning which is uh you know E flat, I use a uh, 9 to 46, and then I use uh, the 10 to 52 on the C guitars. And uh, what are we running on the B? Same as, as the C, but, but what's the what's the 58. yeah 58? And uh, I love them, you know. In Exodus, we tune standard down to D, and so actually Scott at Dunlop is making having me made like special sets. Because I, I like the 10 to 52, but I like a smaller gate diameter, so I'm be running a 50 to 10, but heavy core. And uh, I use Dunlop picks, and they're the green ones. I I haven't played one in green for a million years, so I don't know what um. Yeah, I don't remember the diameter. And these have the little Zodiac Killer on it, and they say hold the weights, and on the other side. So let's talk to you about your amps here. Well, I just recently switched over to the new DSL, which is perfect for me because, you know, I was using, for a while I was using the old 800s, you know, and because I don't have access to the rig at home, like to do like what every guitar player does when they sit around and that is experiment and try to like get your tone right. I'm always kind of like a throw and go and I couldn't get the gain I wanted out of them. Yeah. So I was using the JVMs, which is one of my favorite heads in the world, but when you're running six cabinets worth of, you know, three heads and six cabs, you know, there's a lot of hiss going on. So these, they're perfect for me because I just, I kick them in the front with a little tube screamer and uh, that's gated out real nicely. And, and these give me like the more of a tone that I, I'm accustomed to, you know, I'm a Bay Area boy. I need that, like you know, thrash, like real aggressive top end, more gain than Kerry uses, you know. Kerry's tone's a lot cleaner, but it's perfect for him. But, you know, it's like for me now on this tour, I've, I've finally been just totally like 100% happy with what I got going on tone wise, you know. Are all three heads set up similar? I know obviously each amp is its own beast, but do you set them up differently on purpose or is more it something that- answer that question, yeah. The um, top head is set up to one way um, which has got more bite, and then the, 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 um, the second head is set up to have a little more low end, and the bottom head is set up to the top head, which is the DI. So we mic each head, you know what I mean? So. Do you have it set up how Kerry was explaining to us, how his cabs are set up, where it's one, one head goes to one in cab four, 
His, do you guys our, do similar? Yeah, yeah, the stage right setup a little different. It's uh, the top head is cabinets one and three, middle uh, head is two and four, and the bottom one is five and six. Okay. Why do you prefer that versus what what Carrie is doing? Is that just something you've probably know, been I using for a while? Yeah, that's something. That's <laughs> something that we did with Jeff. That's how we staggered. Uh, oh, we, we always staggered Kerry's side with the one and four. four yeah. You know what I mean? And then uh, Jeff's side was always the one and three, two and four, five and six. So okay. just it's just the way he preferred his tone. So we just kind of kept it that way. Yeah. And I'm running six cabs, and I'm in the side vills and the wedges as well. So oh, you're all over the place. It's, I can't yeah. even check his guitar without my my ears bleeding. Yeah. It's, <laughs> but uh, I got in ears coming soon though. So tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, that's right, huh? Small, but then we'll check them. Yeah, in we'll check them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I keep looking at Warren and going, you know, am I insane for thinking I should turn everything up? And he's like, you're out of your mind. Yeah, it's too loud, dude. It's it's really loud. Like it's loud. <laughs> what else are you using for effects? Well, over here, Warren does all my switching for me. He can explain it, you know, on the Rocktron. Everything is looped through the uh, Rocktron Patchmate, and uh, the tube screamer runs all the time. And then we have, uh, this is a volume pedal that we only use for, uh, if we ever do Jihad, the song Jihad. This is his uh, lead boost that I, I, yeah. I turn on when Electronics he does his leads. Warhog, yeah. yep. And then uh, TC Electronics um, shaker pedal for uh, the effect in Disciple. Yeah, and the then, wiggly yeah. note thing, you know. And then we got the G major, uh, TC Electronics G major for his delay. And then we split all the heads with the JD7. And then this is the MXR for the gate. His uh, antenna dis distribution is two wirelesses, and his uh, channel selector and his tuner. That's it. That's all you need. Yep. Furman power in the bottom there, yeah. The AR Pro, which basically we plug in everything into that, so that if there's a spike in any type of power we get, it'll shut everything off and save everything. So save nothing, will, yeah, nothing <laughs> will ever get blown up. So. How is, if any, does your rig at all differ from what you would use in the Exodus setup? Well, I mean, I've got a tone that's very similar to what I what I do run in Exodus, you know. And Slayer, you know, it's Slayer, we're all about Marshall, you know, and these work perfect. Exodus, I'm running, like, Angle, and I'm also, like, highly addicted to my Kemper preamplifier, which is just, like, the most amazing piece of technology I've yeah. ever purchased on my own. It's so awesome. Are you profiling a lot of stuff just I've to save every, it up? I've got all my 1987 modded Marshalls profiled, my Angles, the JVM. Do you, do you no, stash no, up any I've classics? I've much got everything I, I want. You know, I have my, my Triple X is profiled. You know, I've got some other good ones, you know, and I, I actually, uh, the Tempo of the Damned guitar tone, which is, like, my, like, number one modded Marshall. Andy Sneap actually uh, used some uh, tune tracks like software and absolutely perfectly recreated that profile. So I have that in there. And, you know, him and I will share some profiles that we won't give to anybody else, you know. You know, under, under you know, sworn, un sworn unto death <laughs> if we, like, share amongst anybody but ourselves. But uh, it's amazing what that thing will do. It's, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's phenomenal it's like having a toaster with like all my favorite amps in it <laughs> on a flash drive you know but you know these things here are so killer and they're so highly affordable as well you know it's just uh actually uh, nick at marshall had me try out the joe sacciani jvm because it has the built-in gates and you know and he knew i was having problems with just you know, as much gain as i run there being a lot of hiss, but it's voiced differently. It's voiced for like more a rock head. And I said, I wish you'd never quit making the 2000. And he goes, well, we do now. It's right there. Basically, this is like the new version of it. And I plugged in and I said, that's what I want right there. It's Same thing Jeff Beck used. We just did a video with him and that was one of the They're crushing. Things. I mean, you know, it's got all the gain I want. And I just boost it in the front and the drive's off. The level's all the way up. Just like a little preamp, just to pimp slap the input a little <laughs> bit, you know. All right, thanks, Gary. Thank, Thank you very you. much for your time. This is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out all our future rig rundowns.